All right, so today we've got another plane to unbox and review. Uh, this is again one of my favorite planes of all time, uh, but it's in a, a teeny form, and uh, I'm kind of into that. This plane's been around for a little while, but uh, we're still working through that backlog from over the winter, and uh, well, we're just getting around to it. So let's get into the box and uh, let's let's get this thing ready to fly. All right, so here we have it. Uh, beautiful little plane, UMX Wildcat. Uh, I love the UMX line of planes. They're small, they're fun, they're agile, they fly really well. Now, I've had this sitting in a box waiting for a video, waiting to take out and fly uh, for a little while now. And <laughs> I just went on the Horizon website and it is no longer available. So this plane is officially discontinued, it looks like. Um, that's a disappointment, but I knew it's been around for a while. It's probably end of life. Tate's had one of these for a little while, and well, for quite a while, and it is a hoot to fly. I had to get my own. I had to go and find my own. So, you know, here we are. We're unboxing a plane that's discontinued, but I wanted to share this with you guys anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and do that today. So, oh. Such a beautiful plane. You know, if you're familiar with any of the stories, World War II, especially the beginning there, Pearl Harbor, you'd understand uh, uh, the uh, integral nature uh, of the, uh, the Wildcat um, in the defense of Pearl Harbor. And uh, I think that, that set of stories and that history and lore behind this plane really just, oh man, it just made me fall in love with it. And so, you know, this has been one of my favorite planes as a child. Um, all the way up through adulthood and uh, you know just a gorgeous plane on top of that oh hello look at this thing so we've got some plastic on top and uh, there we go take a look at that oh I'm excited <laughs> now again I, for me this is kind of a, a thing I've already seen before but uh, that's because of Tate owning one of these, but uh, my gosh, I'm, I'm happy to have one, especially now that they're, uh, they're seemingly discontinued. Uh, do me a favor, fact check that. If, if you guys can find these anywhere, or if uh, maybe they're working on a version two, which often I've noticed E-Flight does. Uh, we'll, we'll see if that comes out. But my gosh, this thing is just so light. There is, oh my gosh, it feels like nothing to this plane. So there's our plane, and uh, you know we get a few other interesting tidbits with it. Um, now this is interesting. So this looks like it is. It's a rubberized set of landing gears that, well, retracted landing gears that looks like, uh, yeah, they sure enough do. They, uh, they just snap into the bottom here. So it looks like these gears are removable, and I can take and swap that off. Um, make it into a belly lander. And uh, there we are. I'm not sure why I have such problems hit and miss with these uh, UMX planes on whether or not I get a manual or not. But uh, it's nice to, to check that now and, and see that we've got it. Typical, typical E-Flight plane. Beautiful manual. Uh, everything is super crystal clear. All your settings, configuration. Now these are wonderful planes because these are bind and fly. You just take these suckers, you bind it to your plane, your your radio. You you you're done. You go and you fly. Now, granted, each plane has a little bit of a, a unique settings. Looks like on this, the the dual rates want to be about seventy percent on the lows, hundred percent on the highs. So, other than that, and uh, you know, setting up your basic settings like a throttle cut. Um, Pretty straightforward to set these up and, and get them in the air. Now this runs off of a two cell battery. Um, if memory serves, it's around in the 240 range, uh, 240 to 350. Um, I tend to like to push the, uh, the envelope on that just so I get longer flight times. Um, I've had good luck with that. We're gonna, we're gonna bind this thing up. Let's see how this thing runs. Uh, oh, what a beautiful little plane. Now, one thing I could have looked at is uh, where's the battery access here? And I got a, I got a feeling it's uh, right there. Okay. 
Uh, boy, very tight compartment compared to some of the other UMX planes I've seen. Um, beautiful, beautiful little engine area here. Um, so this has the, uh, the same 3000 kV motor that we see in the other UMX planes. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's apply some power here. There we go. All right, so we've got some, some juice. Now, getting this battery to lay down, that's gonna be the trick. There we go. Now I haven't added my Velcro to that yet. Um, oh, just look at that beautiful little plane. All right, so I'm using a generic profile here. Uh, I have been bit doing this before <laughs> on the, uh, the, the UMX, uh, what is it? Uh, Air, Aero Commander, uh, yeah, that, that wasn't so good. So I don't have any throttle cuts or anything like that set up. Hopefully I don't regret this. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna do a simple bind here. Now again, these little UMX planes tend to be a little temperamental, so we'll hold that radio. Ah, see, there we go. We'll hold that radio back. Now we've got to actually pop this back open and uh, looks like a, our, our flashing pattern, so there's a little LED set on the, on the main board in there and it'll tell you whether or not you've had it filled to the point where you have to try again. All right, we'll give this another whirl, pointing it completely away. There we go. All right, there we are. Well, look at this little beauty. Um, so we're gonna keep a little hold of this and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and let's do a thrust check. It's always the funnest part of every new plane that we get. <laughs> it's amazing the power these little motors have. Just amazing and with such a light airframe. So this guy's got the AS3X set up on it. It does not have safe, um, and I've, I've had to double check myself now a couple times on that. But uh, yep, does not have safe, does have AS3X stabilization. And uh, it's such a small plane, if you take it up and there's a breeze, that really does make a big difference with regards to the performance of the plane. Um, let's go through, these, uh, go through these control surfaces here. So we'll start off with our ailerons. Oh, just beautiful. Rudder. Oh, that's fun. Uh, we actually have our, it looks like a, our tail gear connected there. We'll take a closer look here in a second. Um, and that looks like it is actually connected with its own uh, uh, control rod. So it is not directly glued to the, uh, the, the rudder itself. So that's nice. Uh, and then uh, we've got our elevator here. Beautiful little plane. Details on this are great. Now, you know, again, this is a, a plane that's been out for a while. Um, this may have been sitting on the shelf for a bit, but all of my, uh, I'm noticing stickers, all my graphics are delaminating. So probably have to go through and just give those a little, uh, a little rub down to make them stick better. Um, oh, geez, look at that. Now, one thing that's uh, interesting on this, <clears throat> um, at first glance, uh, as I was unpackaging here, I thought that I had a damaged plane. Um, I thought that, that uh, this had come with some, some damage here on the, on the motor mount, actually. The, the thrust angle on this is really intense. Um, and, you know, rightfully so on such a small plane, but, uh, and Wildcat, I mean, come on, it's, a lot of the warfighters, they get such P-factor, you really have to have something to combat that. But this is exaggerated, uh, holy cow. I mean, if, if we're looking at uh, uh, the front of this, uh, this plane, we've got probably five mil clearance on one side of the prop to the cowl, and we're easily 15 to 20 on the other side. So that is really pronounced. Um, but, you know, I don't see any damage, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it just runs like a top. Beautiful. 
You know, uh, it's nice to see a, at least the effort of putting in a, a, an okay looking pilot. It's one of the downsides when you buy these pre-built planes is you really, you know, unless you want to shred this up uh, and, and open it up and, and repaint that figure. Um, you know, the problem is in doing so, you're going to destroy the paint on the plane, you're going to have to repaint the plane, but you know, it'd be nice to have an easier access um, on some of these so you could go in and just add a little more detail. Because this guy, I'm not sure what he looks like. You know, sometimes we get uh, ninjas. This guy looks like a cowboy. He's got a bandana. Um, yeah, looks like a cowboy. He just needs the hat. <laughs> um, now, this is an interesting thing too. On the newer ULMX planes that we've been getting, uh, the Cirrus is, is probably the most blatant example of this. Uh, we have our in-wing mounted servos and uh, they're completely exposed on those newer planes. There is no protection whatsoever. And that's really, I think, a detrimental thing because, I mean, if you come in and, and land weird, you belly land, you're going through grass and you're pulling that, you know, those threads of grass into the, the gears of those servos that are exposed, I think that's a terrible thing. These have a nice cowl covering them. And I think that is a crucial thing when it comes to these small planes where you have these, uh, these servos that are exposed. Oh, listen to that. AS3X trying to... <laughs> stabilize me doing a, an unbox. You know, I, I can't be more excited for this plane. I think this is going to be an absolute blast to get out there and fly. So uh, we'll have that maiden here coming up soon. Uh, little, just a little park flyer, you know. I mean, you know, if you've got a little park near you, this would be a great plane to have. Again, it doesn't have safe, so this is not what I would call a beginner plane. Um, just because you're not going to have that auto leveling that you can get, build your confidence up, and then roll with this. And the warfighters do tend to be a little more squirrely. So, uh, not a bad little plane. Uh, memory serves, it was about $119, but again, if it's discontinued, ah, and to be honest with you, on the Horizon site, I couldn't even find replacement parts. So, uh, those might be in short supply, and hopefully I don't regret that. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to baby her and keep her in the air, and uh, we'll have some fun with this. So, uh, yeah, Maiden coming up here soon. Uh, we'll see how she flies, and until then, keep flying.